Hello, traders. This is Blake Morrow, and you are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. And hello, Caesar. How are you? Good morning to you. It is morning over here, so maybe it's still morning for you as well. Um, it's been a pretty active, uh, pretty active session thus far, and um, you know the, the the big mover of the session. Well, actually, there's a few big movers. One of them is the euro. If you um, you, you guys that are listening in live are all Forex Analytics subscribers. Uh, Bunch of a uh, bunch of the traders in the chat room were picking up the euro down here, um, right around this time frame. You can see we hit the uh, the uptrend line, came in at 108.60. Um, you know, at that point, you should have known. Hey, we're you know, there's a good chance of us getting a bounce. Uh, it was it was the uptrend line, 127 percent extension, and we got it. Now the question is, are we going to continue from here? Uh, and that that's obviously questionable. I, I haven't ruled out this, so just understand that. And I and I don't have any euro dollar um, longs per se, but I still haven't ruled out this move. All right. And frankly, as long as we're above this uh, 108, let's just call it 108.50. Uh, I think that's still a risk. Um, it has more to do with risk aversion. Uh, versus anything else because what we've seen the last 24 hours which makes a lot of sense to me is if the market is risk averse that means we see stocks sell off the dollar is going to strengthen all right and and that's what we got overnight now obviously the dollar pulled back a little bit uh and the euro bounced but you can't look at just the euro and think, okay, well, it's, you know, it's all euro, euro influence. No, because if you look at like the Aussie, the Aussie, let's, let's not, let's not um, ignore the fact that it is and has rolled over from the bit big key resistance at the 64 cent level. Um, that led me to, you know, uh, shorting some Aussie, being long some euro Aussie, stuff like that. Now we are at a pretty key inflection point right now. With the, the Aussie, you can see this nice trend line held 6280. It's a big deal. Um, what's a bigger deal to me is if this line gets taken out, and because um, this is going to really, if this this trend line gets taken out, that's going to tell me that a uh, the Aussie is going lower, b stocks are going to continue lower, right? They're going to continue lower here. Uh, c um, pair that I'm long and I want to add is uh, the Euro Aussie, which I think will eventually break this resistance. Okay. And then we're going to trade back up towards 180. So I'm more right now concerned with the Aussie dollar than anything. Um, you know, I, cause I, the Aussie is going to influence what I'm doing with the, the Euro Aussie specifically. Um, how am I going to trade the euro? I'm not sure. I, you know, I, I, I didn't buy the euro down here, but I did buy the euro Aussie when we hit this support. So that that's that cued me to play the euro Aussie on the long side. Again, after selling it, I bought it back about 30 pips ago, 20 pips ago, something like that. And I've got a small position, but I don't want to add to that until I see the Aussie dollar actually showing some signs of weakness. Now, uh, let's take a look at the equity markets really quick. Um, I, I already showed you guys the S&P. So the S&P, what we have right now is we're below this trend line. And as long as we we're below this trend line, move this out of the way. As long as we're below this trend line here, I, I think the risk is that we move down towards the support or channel support, you know? Now, if we break through channel support, this is when, you know, you have to be really, really careful with stocks because then we're going to get this, you know, second, you know, guys in the chat room are calling it a second wave. Yes, we're going to see a second wave of weakness in equities if that level is broken. All right. So uh, now here's the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's outperforming. You know, when you have stocks like Amazon hitting all-time highs. Yeah, you heard it. Amazon hit an all-time high. And if you don't know why, I mean, you think about it. Amazon's pretty much the best positioned company for what's happening right now, period, end of story. They have home delivery, food delivery, they have cloud services, 
shopping you got it, right i mean the and on top of that you've got gas a national average of of uh of of uh unleaded here in the united states is less than two dollars a gallon that's just talking about the united states but if you think about that you know when there's only the only vehicles that are on the road are amazon uh trucks and they're operating at a cheaper capacity <laughs> See, I mean, who isn't better to, 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 to really benefit than Amazon, right? So you can see why the NASDAQ stocks are, are you know, out, outperforming. And, you know, yes, we are at a 618 retracement. Other thing we got to notice here um, regarding the NASDAQ, because it is, you, you were just talking about, um, we're just talking about Amazon here, is that uh, we might actually be making a lower high. And we got to think, you know, just take that into consideration when you're dealing with the, with with the indices in general, that's the NASDAQ 100. Uh, here's the here's the Dow. The Dow's really been the laggard, uh, failing at the 50% retracement. And I think, um, you know, some of these Dow stocks are going to be in some trouble if the if the market does roll over. I'll be, I'll be looking at this spot right here in the Dow, right through here. This is where really we got you know, this is going to be key support for the, for the stock market. And uh, that's a 200 period moving average for the four hour 50 period moving average as well. But those, those are irrelevant when we when or if we start breaking through, you know, some of the support here, you can see right through here, right? Okay. So come, come through here and it's going to, it, it could get a little, uh, get a little ugly. So uh, sorry, one of my neighbors was walking by waving at me after he ran. Uh, uh, th there's a <laughs> there's a funny video. Uh, d d d this is completely off topic. There's a, c a funny video where there's this lady, and she's you can tell she's like drunk, and she she comes out. It's this like ten second video. If you guys haven't seen, it, it's hilarious. This lady comes out of her front door. She's like, "Hey, what are you doing? Where 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 are you running to? Who are you running from? Where are you going?" And then. And then she's like, it's seven in the morning. And then she starts drinking her glass of wine. Get it? Because there's everybody's out running and jogging in the morning. And it's it's actually a pretty funny video. Is this <laughs> I make I make myself laugh. Okay. Uh last thing. Uh let's talk about the Canadian. Um, so the Canadian, it's broken out. Now the, the question is, where can you buy it? I've been uh I've played it a couple of times on the long side this morning. Um, just scalping it, nothing super exciting. What I'm hoping to do with the dollar Canadian is I'm hoping that it dips back towards 140 and change, um, you know, maybe 50 or 60 pips lower than here. But I have to imagine everybody's trying to buy the, the, the dollar Canadian. Everybody's trying to sell Canadian dollars. Look, you got crude that's below $20 a barrel. You've got a central bank that's um, doing more quantitative easing. They did keep rates unchanged, but they're buying more. Uh, corporate debt. Uh, what else are they buying there? They buy. Uh, hold on, I'll tell you. Do, 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 do. They have, they are buying corporate and provincial debt. So you know, obviously, um, municipal bonds types of things. So you know, they're expanding their QE horizons, if you will. So the dollar Canadian is going to stay weaker as a result. And if stocks stay weak, that means the Canadian dollar is going to stay weak. So for me, it's it's a buy on dip type of situation. The question is how far are we going to dip? You know, if we can get the dollar Canadian down here, you know, down at these levels, maybe, you know, 140, 60, that might be it. I'm, I'm hoping for a little bit deeper dip, you know, maybe to the 38% retracement somewhere down here around 140 and a quarter. But I, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can, we'll see if that's even possible. You know, I, I think you're going to have to see a pretty aggressive bounce in equities, excuse me, in order for that to happen. But if it does happen, I'll be looking to buy the dollar Canadian on that type of dip if it comes. Um, all right, guys and gals, if you're listening to this uh, a little late, um, meaning you're not listening to this uh, when I'm live, that means you're probably not a Forex Analytics subscriber. So in order to subscribe, well, at least you can try it out. It's only $1 for 10 days. Uh, doesn't matter what version, premium or light. 
you choose. You'll still get to use the premium version while you're testing us out. Make sure you download the mobile app and then you can log in to the webinars. Um, you can see even when you're on this, the, the platform, see where it says daily, FA Daily Roundup, It's you just click that button and it logs you right in. All right, guys and gals, have a great one. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning on the FACE webinar.